I'm Lydia Halley. Some of you might know me as the Avocoder or the Avocoder Girl if you're on Instagram. Um, I actually worked for Prisma last year, so I'm really happy to be back in Berlin and talk about database integration testing. But before I talk about database integration testing, let's just like cover what integration testing is in the first place. Like, why do you want to do it? What is it exactly? And uh, as with everything with software development, there are always challenges. But uh, I'm here to present some of the solutions that Prisma uh, is introducing with some new tools. And of course, a demo. So why do you want to have tests or integration tests in the first place? I mean, when you write code, you expect it to work. Um, that unfortunately doesn't always happen, but you still need to know like, okay, to what extent is it actually working? So you want to make sure that your requirements are met and that your software uh, works as expected and not just in good cases. I mean, that's all good, like your application should work if everything is working as expected, but if it doesn't, you want to make sure that you know, your application doesn't just crash and burn if there's an error anywhere. And of course, you want to be able to change code knowing that you didn't just like screw something else up in a part of the code base that you didn't even touch, right? So what can we test? The very first thing is of course use, uh, unit testing. So you want to validate that like every small part of your code is working as expected. So even just the simplest functions like validating an email or validating a password, sending a verification email, just some small examples, like they should always return the same based on your input, right? Like this email is valid, um, so we always expect this to be true. And if this were to be false, then we know, okay, this unit isn't working. But some of the like common problems with unit testing is that, you know, a unit can work, but it doesn't mean that the entire flow is working. I mean, validation or like our validate email function can work, but it doesn't mean that a user can sign up properly. Uh, and also, to what extent do you really want to test your unit, right? I mean, do we just want to test that the email returns true or the valid email returns true, or do we also want to test, like, how far do we want to test it? Unit tests are very straightforward. Um, they're very small. For example, this uh, is valid, or variable should be true uh, in, in, in this case, like validate email and alice at prisma.io is a valid email, right? So in order to make sure that each part is working, and not just a simple units, we have integration tests. And with integration tests, we ensure that each part and also the communication between every part is working as expected. So if we have an input like a normal user, uh, an email and a password, we create the user, validate email, and we uh, put the user in our API or in our database, and we fetch it again. It should just work, it should be there. And if that happens to be true, then we know that every single part, the entire flow is working. So that's pretty important if you want to test an app and push, like push it to production. Uh, yeah, so this is like an example of an integration test. Uh, we first create a new user, which is just an object. Uh, we create the user to our API, and we, we fetch it again. And of course, the fetched user should be equal to the user that we had before. There shouldn't be any changes. Email shouldn't suddenly be, I don't know, the name or anything. Because then we know, like, okay, so every part was working as expected. Now. As always, there are some problems also with integration testing. For example, comparing objects instead of values, it's pretty easy to compare like a Boolean value or a string. But if you have, a, in this example, the object's pretty small, so it's still pretty easy. But like to match object, if you have a really large post or like a really big blog post with many fields and you have to write everything manually, you, like we don't want to do like a lot of manual work, uh, and you also have a lot of boilerplate, and writing tests just becomes even like more annoying, and we want to kind of avoid that. So a solution to this is of course snapshot testing. So with snapshot testing, it like automatically generates an object and it stores it locally, and it just checks the diff each time that we run the test. Like, okay, is the snapshot still the same? Because they should be the same, because nothing has changed. Uh, so in that case, of course, we also don't have to do anything manually. Uh, it's all automatically. Now another problem is seeding the databases with real looking fake data. Um, and a solution to this is Prisma Faker. So with Prisma Faker, we take our data model and it generates real looking fake data for us. So we don't have to do it ourselves. Um, simply like before each test, we first create like a new photon instance we then uh, like seed the data with a seed method. And in this case, I set a, a, like a variable data equal to it, because later on in the test, I want to check it. So for example, it always resets and returns the same data. 
which is really nice, because in this case, so the default um, length is 100, so there should be 100. So I didn't like create any post myself now, I just have, before each test, it sees it automatically. So this should return true, and because it's the same data, we can do the same like match object again, because at every time it should just, it's the same data. So the data that we, or the variable data that we declared first is equal to our seeded data. And also all snapshots are equal. So every time we can run the same tests without having to write any um, data ourselves and it's always the same data. So I didn't want to live code anything so I pre-recorded it. And it just passes all. So it, these are the same tests that I um, showed on my previous slides. Um, first, before each uh, test, we seed our database, we run the small test, so for its length and then to match object, and they all uh, pass. So this is really nice. This already saves us a lot of time because we don't have to say, uh, seed our database ourselves. Now another problem is to provision and seed databases programmatically and to parallelize tests. Because you can often use like your database data, but if you have a lot of tests that run in, like, in uh, like a series, maybe one test is creating a post, the other one is deleting it, the other one is modifying it. Like you always kind of need to keep track of like, okay, well, where am I really manipulating my data? So this is where DB testing pool comes in. So with DB testing pool, we can parallelize tests. So this already saves a lot of time because let's say that one test is 10 seconds, the other one is 40 seconds, the other one is like 30 seconds. This already gives you like a 70 seconds test suit, which is really long, especially if you like run your test every time you push or commit or whatever. Uh, so with DB uh, testing pool, you can parallelize tests and also provision new and real databases. So for every test, you have a new and a real database that you test against, which is, uh, so that would look like this. Uh, Oh, I kind of cheated here. I added a delay of two seconds to make them slow. Uh, but first we run our pool. Uh, we create a new photon instance again. We create some posts. Uh, and then we first expect our length to be one. So every test here, I have five tests and they are two seconds. But because they all run in parallel, it only took us four seconds to run everything instead of 10 seconds that it would normally take. Yeah. This talk was pretty short, but I really hope that both Prisma Faker and the DB testing pool uh, will help you a lot with adding tests to your application. That it, it's, it will save you a lot of time and it will also make testing a lot more reliable because you always have the same data uh, that is also real looking data. Thank you so much. <laughs>